Hi, I'm John from Nightworks, and we've been around for about five or six years. We uh, started dabbling with publishing games back in 2000, and we started with some stuff uh, way back then. But uh, when Kickstarter started up a while back in 2011, we started working with another game, and uh, our very first game out of the gate happened to be Dark Horse. But uh, recently we just had some new releases, and another game that we just came out with is Forge and Steel. So Forge and Steel is a city building, art driven game, and basically it has some uh, similarities to Twilight Struggle. So a lot of the cards will have this concept of points, and we in some other games call these ops, we call them municipal muscle, but you Basically, how you play the game is you use a card for the points or for the ability that's on the bottom. So whether that's place a factory, place a civic building, or if you want to use these points. Uh, a lot of the things in the game, such as factories, cost two points, a mine costs two. So you have an option on how you want to play that sort of thing. Basics of the game is that it's a city builder, so you start out really small. This would be a good example of a game that's pretty far along, almost towards the end of the game. And in the game, there are different things such as factories that you can build. You can also build commercial buildings. And you'll notice that there's a little cube on top that marks the ownership. So if the blue player puts down a factory, they're going to, of course, mark it with their blue ownership cube. And then there's this concept of just building out the various neighborhoods. So you're dealt so many cards throughout the era. There's, diff there's three different eras in the game. There's 1890, 1900, and 1910. And they also correspond to very specific decks. So in the 1890 deck, you'll see different things like a mining uh, and a uh, unrest type of movement. And those things change throughout the different areas. By the time you get to the uh, 1910, there's a lot of civic and suffrage movements. And what's neat about this game is that it's based in Pueblo, Colorado. So the designer was a city planner in Pueblo, Colorado for about six, seven years and uh, he designed this based around the entire history of uh, Pueblo, Colorado, where it had different things happening as far as it coming to be uh, the Pittsburgh of the West was one of the, the things that it was called, the Steel City. So this captures that feel. It's a two to four player game, and it has different types of roles that you can take over. So there are different roles like the mayor role or the mob boss. So there's different things you can be in the game that give you special powers. And these roles have different abilities and different helpful hints on the back. So you would take these over to your side and play out with those abilities. Other than that, you're basically building out the town. Uh, some of the things you do in the game is there's un uh, prosperity tracks. So these prosperity tracks line up to factories, mines, commercial buildings. So in one game, the prosperity track for factories might be really hot. So if it's at a four, for example, then every factory that you own is worth four points. Whereas if the mines are still back at one, then all the various mines that you have may only be worth one or two points. But you actually control that playing the cards. So you may find a card in here that says bump the uh, prosperity track for mines. So you have to make this uh, general decision on do I use these for points to build out more cards or do I use them to bump up the tracks. Another interesting aspect is if you do anything that's uh, a little bit dirty or underhanded, you have to put uh, cubes on the unrest track. So as you continue to add cubes on this unrest track, once you hit eight, a riot happens. The player with the most cubes, the unrest track, is the target of the riot. The player with the least cubes leads the riot. And then you would just roll a die and determine how many spots you could burn down, in, in essence. So you would pick somewhere, whoever the target was, and you would start taking out buildings. So if someone has a really powerful civic building or a commercial building or a factory, then you would actually be able to burn that down. And that's basically the penalties. You have to be careful on how you manage the unrest track. There are cards in the game that allow you to give unrest to players or take away unrest from yourself. And uh, that's something you have to manage in the game. Other than that, you're basically determining how you want to play the game. Do you want to invest in factories or mines or commercial buildings? Do you want to play a more conflict-heavy game where you're giving other players unrest, you're burning down their houses, you're causing floods in their areas? 
and uh, that's the, the basic gist of the game. The objective of the game is to get the most victory points, so at the end of the 1910 era, the person who has the most points will be the winner of the game. There's also elections in the game, so at the end of each era, there'll be an election which determines who has the most houses, which is the most votes inside of a specific neighborhood, and then whoever has the most votes over the entire city becomes the mayor. And that's what this role is for. So it has a little interesting flavor, a little more interesting uh, items that you can add to the game, and that's Forge and Steel.